The early 1920s saw the dawn of international amateur radio. Following developments by a number of important scientists and scholars, a series of significant milestones over an exciting five years led to two-way transatlantic communications becoming commonplace. The Radio Society of Great Britain and the ARRL, the National Association for Amateur Radio in the United States, are celebrating the achievement of radio amateurs 100 years ago. On the second weekend in December 2021, radio amateurs from the Kilmarnock and Loudoun Amateur Radio Club set up a special event station at the site used by Paul Godley to Zulu Echo in 1921. As part of the joint celebrations with the ARRL, senior representatives of the Radio Society of Great Britain joined the club members on this special site. This hardy group braved the wind and rain to make contact with radio amateurs around the world. Meanwhile, over at the North Ayrshire Heritage Centre in Saltcoats, a fabulous exhibition had been created about Paul Godley and others who took part in these exciting amateur radio developments. Robbie, Golf Mike Zero, Sierra Echo India, took RSGB President Stuart Bryant, Golf 3 Yankee Sierra X-Ray, round the centre to explain the exhibits. He was born in 1889 and his father was a minister in the Union Christian uh, Church. He went uh, to college, Defiance College, um, and uh, he found that the United Wireless Company had installed a radio station on the roof of the, one of the hotels in Chicago. So uh, he went to find out more about it and again was operated. It was offered a job as an operator on one of the ships right. that were being equipped right. uh, with radios. Um, and it rolled on uh, from there. He then went to Brazil uh, in 1912 and worked on a contract with the government there to create a network for the Madeira Memorial uh, Railroad. Okay. Um, moving on from there, uh, governments were picking up the whole business of radio, including the military, uh, of course, um, uh, and he uh, contributed to the development of the US Navy's okay. um, uh, aircraft uh, and radio telephone uh, technology. So the ARRL uh, commissioned uh, a series of tests um, which became known as the, the transatlantic experiments. The arrangement was uh, they were going to transmit from uh, Greenwich, Connecticut uh, across to uh, Adrosan. Paul was going to receive it uh, and then send back uh, to them by commercial telegraph the message to prove that it, it had been done and verified by a, a, the, the, it was a genuine a message. <laughs> uh, Paul Godley was well known in radio circles um, uh, as a, an operator. His call sign uh, was uh, 2ZE. Um, which is in, incorporated in the special calls that yep. uh, will be used today. Um, so the arrangement was that Paul Godley is our, our best man in America, uh, the ARL says. If anybody can get a, a receive a signal from across the Atlantic, he's the man. <laughs> so he was paid by the ARRL to come across and set up uh, a receiving station. It's only a receiving station. It wasn't until the following year that we actually had a two-way right. uh, QSO. It was a question of where was it going to transmit from. Right. Originally, he it set up in London, but he found that the interference and the electrical noise was too much. Okay. Does that sound familiar? That sounds familiar, really, yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, quite why he selected a trusting we don't know. We have an explanation, but um, uh, he decided uh, 
that he would move to Abrosnica and that was because, as he quoted, uh, its geographical position is convenient to a large centre and in a straight line between Abros and New York. There's no high land intervening. The line passes the north end of Arran, crosses the low part of Kintyre and Ely, and there's an absolutely clear passage. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, perhaps in his mind he had uh, the commercial angle again, because he said that if any commercial uh, telegraphic concerns decided to erect additional stations in Britain for communications, uh, then Ardrossan would be a suitable okay. uh, location. So he put Ardrossan on the map in that sense. <laughs> Saturday night, the eleventh, uh, or Sunday morning, the twelfth, uh, nineteen twenty-one, um, he received uh, the first recorded uh, signal, uh, verified, uh, verified by a, a, a representative of, uh, of the Marconi Company um, to make sure it was all kosher, um, and that was the signal that he received. Hearty congratulations. Uh, Burger Inman, Grinan uh, Armstrong, uh, Amy and Cronkite, um, uh, and that was the actual message that they sent. Hearty congratulations, uh, DE1BCG, um, and 1BCG was the station that was set up by those group of individuals in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, there was a lot of talk about how far signals would travel. And at that time, all the commercial stations were all on long wave. Yes. Um, and in fact, good for us as radio amateurs, the short waves were given to us to play with <laughs> because they thought uh, the authorities, they weren't interested in it in, uh, for commercial purposes. So they thought, oh, hang it, um, we'll give it to these amateurs to play with. They can talk to their friends down the, the street. They won't get much further. <laughs> That was the, the logic, but the amateurs at the time knew uh, that uh, there was more to it than that because they'd been receiving sporadic signals. Even then, uh, there were problems with pirates and people making claims uh, that were, couldn't be substantiated. Right. So the actual tests were run quite scientifically. Stations in the USA were giving specific times to transmit along with specific codes so that they could be verified. Um, and as I said earlier, uh, there was a representative from Marconi uh, who was there to observe Paul and verify that the signals were uh, in fact genuine. <laughs> To maybe add a, a, a little bit of a frisson to the whole affair, um, a Burnham and Company offered a new spring hat uh, as a, a bet, uh, and the idea was uh, they were a, a Burnham and Co were a prominent British manufacturers of a, a British apparatus, a, a radio apparatus, amongst other things. Uh, and they said they bet that Godly would hear uh, no American amateurs. Uh, <laughs> so when it transpired that he, he did actually receive the signals, they actually sent a, a hat. There's a very small right. uh, uh, picture of it there. And in fact, in the December rad call, you'll see two hats. Oh, that's uh, the significance have, of the hat. The yes, the right. uh -huh. but that's the origin of it. Uh, so of course the bet was won, uh, and uh, they got the. Uh, the that's hat. for the forfeit. Uh, that was it. As night fell, the focus moved back to the special event station in Ardrossan. At 0252, the club monitored the reenactment of the One Bravo Charlie Golf message to Paul Godley, which took place by CW on 1825 kilohertz from Whiskey to Romeo Charlie Alpha, the call sign of the Radio Club of America. 
The message included the 1921 message, followed by Best wishes to all from the Radio Club of America for the next 100 years of wireless progress. 7-3 from Whiskey 2, Romeo, Charlie, Alpha. The senior RSGB representatives were delighted to witness the event and are grateful to the club for its part in creating the reenactment. The RSGB and ARRL each activated a special event station for six hours on 160 metres to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the success of the second transatlantic tests. The RSGB activated GB2 Zulu Echo from Scotland with the Kilmarnock and Loudoun Amateur Radio Club and a team of stations from the GMDX group sharing the operating. The GMDX Group of Scotland awarded a quaich, a traditional Scottish drinking cup representing friendship, to the first stations in North America and the UK, including the Crown Dependencies, to complete contacts with both Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey and Golf Bravo 2 Zulu Echo during the QSO party. The cup winners were Rick Niswander, Kilo 7 Golf Mike, and Bob Barden, Mike Delta Zero, Charlie Charlie Echo. Well done, everyone. The celebrations will continue through to the end of 2022. You can also receive a special commemorative QSL card sponsored by the Radio Society of Great Britain for contact with specific stations. Our thanks to everyone involved in all of the events. A fantastic achievement. <laughs>